Hello friends and fellow readers. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you are here. My name is Becca and this channel focuses on all things middle grade literature, specifically focusing on the first chapters of all your favorite middle grade novels. Today, we are going to be reading the first chapter of We Dream of Space by Erin Entrada Kelly. Erin Entrada Kelly has written so many novels. I cannot even list them all to you. She did win the Newbery Award for Hello Universe. Um, and I personally loved this book. And one of the reasons I love it is much of the book, or in fact, all of the book takes place in the 80s. Uh, and I, I love a book that gives me a little bit of historical fiction, a little bit of historical context. I always love learning when I read my novels. So I loved We Dream of Space, and I think you will too. Um, we're going to start by reading the front and side cover so you can get an idea what this novel is going to be about. Meet the Nelson Thomas siblings of Park, Delaware. Cash, who loves basketball but has a newly broken wrist, is in danger of failing second grade for the second time. Fitch, who spends every afternoon playing major havoc at the arcade and wrestles with an explosive temper he doesn't understand. Bird, Fitch's 12-year-old twin, who wants to be NASA's first female shutter, shuttle commander, but feels like she's invisible. <clears throat> Cash, Fitch, and Bird live in the same house, but exist in their own orbits. Dreaming of hope, dreaming of belonging, dreaming of friendship, dreaming of family, dreaming of space. All right, let's dive on in. The first chapter is titled Ready for Takeoff. And the first chapter takes place on Wednesday, January 1st, 1986. The pinball machine didn't steal Fitch Thomas's quarter. Not really. But when one of the flippers is broken, there's no point in playing. As soon as Fitch realized this, something sparked inside him, something ugly and familiar. He stared at the slot where he'd sunk his quarter only moments before. Easy does it, Fitch. Just go to Mr. Henley's office and get your quarter back. No big deal. The blinking lights of the machine, Bright Star One it was called, seemed out of place in the arcade today. Fitch looked around. He was one of the only people there. Maybe it was too early for people. It was never too early for him. Ready for takeoff, the lights blazed. He left them behind and walked to Mr. Henley's office. The door with manager stenciled above the frame was open, as usual. Mr. Henley was the manager, owner, and staff. When quarters were stolen, he was the man to see. Fitch cleared his throat. Mr. Henley, he said. Mr. Henley looked up from his ledger. Henry Nelson Thomas, my favorite patron, what brings you to the front office? This was what Mr. Henley always said, even though no one called him Henry, and Mr. Henley's office was in the back corner of the small arcade, nowhere near the front. Fitch, mo Fitch motioned half-heartedly toward Pinball Row. One of the machines is broken, he said. Mr. Henley placed both hands on his desk and stood up like President Reagan, ready to face the Soviets. That is unacceptable, Patron Thomas, he said. Mr. Henley was what Fitch's mother would call an odd duck, but he moved fast. Within seconds, he was in front of the major Havoc game in the center of the arcade, squinting at the screen. Not that one, Fitch said. He pointed at Bright Star One. This one. Mr. Henley raised an eyebrow. But you're a major Havoc guy. One from all, all from one, fighting for humanity and all that. Yes, it was true. On any given day, Fitch could be found at the Park Delaware Arcade, officially named the Pinball Wizard, but known to the locals as the Arcade on Main, playing Major Havoc, a game that his best friend Vern Repass said was Star Wars wannabe, even though Major Havoc had been released first, but whatever. Vern was so obsessed with Star Wars that Fitch had developed unrefounded resentment toward Luke, Han Solo, and the whole lot of them. Except Vader, maybe. Vader was kind of cool. The more Vern ragged on Major Havoc, the more dedicated and defensive Fitch became. And now he was so pre preoccupied with beating his own high score 
that Major Havoc, in all his vector graphic glory, sometimes appeared in his dreams, demanding that he get to the reactor before everyone exploded. But today was January 1st, and Fitch had made a New Year's resolution to try something different. The last time he was here, his twin sister had come along and been entranced by Bright Star One with its spaceship and lights. She didn't want to actually play it. Video games were not her thing. But she tried to convince him to give it a chance. He'd snapped at her to leave him alone, then felt bad about it later. So he'd gone for the pinball machine this morning, even though no one played pinball anymore. And now look what had happened. Mr. Hindley made his way to Bright Star One and tapped it affectionately. What's wrong with it, he asked. The right flipper's broken, replied Fish. Mr. Hindley pushed the button. When nothing happened, he said, it's impossible to play a respectable game of pinball with just one flipper. Duh, Fitch thought. Mr. Hindley disappeared into the office and emerged seconds later with a sheet of paper with out of order written across it in fat black letters. The smell of magic marker wafted in the air as he taped it across Bright Star One. Thanks for the heads up, Patron Thomas, Mr. Hindley said. He smiled. It was a wide and pleasant and took up most of his face. Anything else I can help you with? Yeah, you can give me my quarter, Fitch thought, but he didn't say it out loud. The fire was too bright. That was the first chapter of We Dream of Space. Um, now, what you didn't get to hear in the first chapter was the perspectives of the uh, other siblings that they mentioned at the beginning of the novel, Bird and um, Cash. So <clears throat> they're both really interesting characters. They're both super unique and totally different from one another. So if you didn't relate to Fitch's character, you might relate to Bird's or Cash's. So please be sure to check this book out. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing so that you can be notified every time we have a new First Chapter Friday read aloud. All right, friends, until next time, happy reading.